begin to move to where you need to be. As good and great as this keyboards may be, if you, if you don't have an organist to play them, you will never know what they can do. Or if you have somebody who goes to play and doesn't know what is playing. So, don't dumble into what you don't have. The way of falsehood. Amen? But you can develop yourself. You can develop yourself. And you'll be amazed what God can do through you. Amen? The bank of heaven never run dry. The time is not there where I share my personal experience with you. What God was doing when I left off what became of me and how much I have to pray and pray and pray before I could even get started again. What you don't use, you will lose it. And if you have it and you don't demonstrate it, Philip never knew how much deposit he had in him when he was in Jerusalem until he got away Sandalia. And then he saw that he was an evangelist. That was not when he was in Jerusalem. He was just good for what? Serving the Lord. Nice brother. Nice brother. And unfortunately, some of us have been pushed out like Philip was pushed out. And yet we're still acting like when we were just brother. You're more than a brother. You're now a minister. Make the full proof of your ministry. Look at the team for our retreat. What is the team? The evolving leader. What will the world see in you that will make them know that you are different from who you used to be? May the full proof of your ministry. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. We rise up as we sing together. Ancient world, long preserved. For our walk in this world. There is son with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope. Give us strength, help us cope. In this world, wherever we roam, ancient words will guide us home.
microphone now. with microphone everybody words in power. God is moving in his church. He's reviving his com commissioned leaders. I hope you will not leave here the same way you came. In Jesus' name we'll pray. Father, we thank you for another privilege to be trained by you. Thank you for your plan to fill testy hearts today. Lord, I pray that plan will become a reality. We will not live here empty. But rather, we will live here empty of self, but full of power and of wisdom and of might to do the work you have committed into our hands in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because of, we know that you are moving in different dimension. We pray that the dimension you want to open our eyes to behold now. The web of the past will not keep us glued to the past. Rather, we'll move as the Spirit leads. And as effective ministers of the gospel, who will succeed in our place of calling in Jesus' name. So I know you've answered. 
For in Jesus' name we pray. Before we sit down, please. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Let's open it, please. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I want us to cross this verse with meaning and um, ask yourself and myself if actually we have done this last wish of the, you know, reason and trust. Jesus was moving up to heaven and this was the last word he said on earth according to the Bible. Let's read. After the count of two, one to go. For ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Jude all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria have been conquered. But there is a place God wants to send these militant soldiers to. At the uttermost part. Many a times we do not, we can't actually fathom what this means. When Jesus said the uttermost part, the question will be what does it really mean? Does he have any geographical boundary? I tell you no. It's the global space, the digital space. I pray that God will raise up digital in Jesus' name. We need digital prayer warriors. There are people who are languishing in pain, and they need people who can only spend time online to pray for them. We need digital evangelists. Mike, please, can you give me a different mic? If this is... We need digital missionaries. We need digital evangelists. We need digital apologetics. There's so much error out there. And if we don't defend the faith, then we'll just be joking. And that's why the clarion call from God to you today is come out from the past. Moses was told to strike the rock the first time. That same God told him, on, you know, the same wilderness, same God, same rock. He now told him to speak to the rock. We have stricken the rock. Judea has been conquered. Jerusalem, Samaria. Now God needs men that would feature in the utmost part realm. I pray may he find you faithful. May he find you dependable. And may he find you available in Jesus' name. You can sit down. Evolving information technology for ministry. We've just read... Acts chapter 1, and I must tell you, I don't think the slides are up. I prepared this slide from 12 a.m. this morning. I was asking God, what am I going to say? Our church is known for our traditional pattern. Are we actually ready to reach out to the global space? I pray that we will not be tied up with the past. The past is always a problem for those who want to be dynamically engaging. How do I mean? I just told you about Moses. Speak to the rock. Sorry, strike the rock. Speak to the rock. He, he rather struck the rock again. Elijah was told to go to the brook the first time. The next time, what did God tell him? Go to a widow. For your sustenance. Same purpose for his sustenance, but this time go to the brook. When the brook had been exhausted, he said, go to the widow. May God give us discerning spirit. May God give us the mind and the willingness to dynamically move with the move of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is looking for men and women who will take charge of the digital space. Slide two, please. And Mr. Stishan, at the moment, I'm doing a PhD in um, big data analytics. So I love data. Next slide, sir. And um, this graph I want to show you 
shows an exponential curve and a linear curve. Technology is advancing on an exponential, you know, graph, as you can see, the growth. The linear curve is like the church development. It's also growing, right? By virtue of historical happenstances. But we can see the rise and the exponential, the log transformation of the, you know, the technology and digital advancement. Therefore, there is a gap called the disruptive gap, which therefore brings to mind the need for platforms, tools, and people, and strategy to be able to bridge that gap. This graph has so much interpretation. I will not spend so much time on that. I'll be providing this slide to as many who need it. Anytime there is an innovative shift in culture, one must pause and ask questions. Is this innovation correct? Is it ethical? Is it biblical? And um, from the little research I've been doing since 2016, when this whole vision started, I, by the grace of God, reached out to the leadership of the church in Nigeria. And um, because I saw the gap, we you know, launched a new cathedral. The cathedral, I, there was something God told me. He said, the vision of 1973 cannot be, you know, sustained with the way we've been doing things. That, the, the, you know, we need to revamp our, our style, our strategy, and go up to the digital space. And I did a digital strategy, and I sent, and by the grace of God, GS saw it, and, you know, called for a meeting. There are some favored five, some of our key leaders, which some of us may know, and they called a meeting. I went to the church secretary, and we presented this strategy to them. And that's when the move of the digital space started. As it started, I left and I came here. And why I came here, one of the good reasons why I'm in the program I'm in is to see how to create a digital church platform for the church. YouTube, you, you have limited content you can share on YouTube. If you begin to teach the undiluted word of God about, you know, man and woman, <laughs> YouTube will yank you out and say, no, that's not what we stand for. Facebook will call you hate speech. And many other platforms that are governed by, you know, people of the, of the underworld, they would not want Jesus, only Jesus ever, to be on their platforms. But we'll start from what we have to where we're going to. We're looking forward to when we'll have a digital church, where you can preach the word without fear, without you know, favoritism, without trying to be nice. You know, the world now needs men that can be, that will just preach nice gospel. They don't want impactful gospel. And that's why as ministers of the gospel, it's either you go digital or you go home. What did I say? You go digital or you go home. I worked for a digital advertising agency sometime in 2014 and, you know, I led the thoughts in trying to run digital campaigns for big brands. And I see how much advertising budget was beginning to be you know, created for the digital space. It was a rising curve. If the people of the world now know that their brands and their products must have a digital presence, what about us that have the brand called Jesus? the biggest brand on planet earth and in heaven. The brand that is above every other brand. At the mention of that brand, what happens? Every knee bows. Then why can't we create, you know, why can't we begin to look at creating, you know, a, a, enough budget? Because digital requires, you know, budget as it were. But you know what? It's a very cost-effective budget. The, this church that is built. If we're going to buy a land now and build a church, the money you used to buy a land and build a church can sustain your digital strategy for close to five to ten years. And you'll see that you have more people online. If you do it well, 
that will cascade from the online platform and we look for you physically. That's the trend today. Digital is biblical. If you don't go there, please go home. To reach your 85% of unchurched people, go digital. To reach 75% of the church people, what I mean by the church are those who were once members of a church, but they've left. There's a universe called the internet now, and that's where they, they live. They spend about seven hours daily on that planet. There's a new word called metaverse. Now, even the people of the world are beginning to see that universe is not enough. That beyond universe, there is the metaverse sphere, sphere rather. But the church is still sleeping. May God wake us up in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us we should go to the uttermost part. And the global goal for the church of the 21st century is to witness to the uttermost part through digital evangelism and digital missions. My first point will be emerging statistics, trends, and moral decadence of the digital ecosystem. I will be sharing this slide, so if you can write some things, fine. If you can't write, no problem. I'll share it with the leadership, and if our arrow permits, we'll share it with everybody. Emerging statistics, trend, and moral decadence of the digital ecosystem. I want you to see the Bible. The Bible in Acts chapter 18, verse 9. Acts chapter 18. Verse 9. Acts chapter 18, verse 9. The Bible says, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night vision, in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. What is the last line? For I have much people in this city. Somebody will say, ah, ah, in Athens. How is God saying I have much people in Athens? God is the God who believes in his, you know, in what he has. He, he is a God that knows his capacity, knows what he can do and knows the future. He spoke into the future that he has much people in this city. So also for us as ministers of the gospel, when you come to the digital space, we should not wear the cap that we used to wear before. They say everybody online has seen us. Everybody online are doing this. God has much people in that city. God has much people on Facebook. God has much people in, on Twitter. God has much people on Instagram. God has much people on YouTube. But he doesn't have the Paul. He doesn't have the Peter. That will stay on those platforms to decree the mind and the counsel of God. May God make us the Paul and the Peter of our generation for the digital space in Jesus' name. There is a baffling statistics that I saw about the American church. And the American church is actually dwindling. In, you know, they used to be first about God. If you are intentionally inverted across to show you that, yes, there's so much crowded people still associating with the cross symbol, with Jesus. But they actually raising up the, the cross, standing for the truth. Is this how Christ was crucified? They're turning him upside down because of the fear of man. And there are some research that was released by Pew's research in 2020. And they said about 65% of adults in the United States still identify as Christians. But you listen to this. In 2015, they were 75%. In 2014, they were 70%. In 2012, they were 78%. In 2021, they were 81.6%. In 1990, they were 85 percent. So in 20 years now, 1990 to 2020 is about 30 years now, right? In 30 years, we've lost about 25 percent 
of those who identified as Christians. These are secular people who did this research. If you look at the next slide, the practicing Christian population has shrinked to a half in the last 20 years by this research that was done in the year 2020. Sorry, that the, 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 the period of the, the data they gathered was between 2020, 2020 and 2000. And if you look at that, I don't know how, you know, they can zoom this. The practicing Christian is the red graph on top. They started from 45%. And now they are 25%. In 20 years, we've lost 20% of Christians. Where did the practicing Christians go? That's a question we should ask ourselves. I discovered the data was split into two. One of them stopped going to church. One of the, you know, the half pastors they stopped going to church. They fell away from consistent faith. They fell away from engaging Christianity. They fell away from essentially become, and they became, you know, non-practicing Christians. And they are proud about it. Go online, you see them. In 2000, the people who were not practicing Christians were just 35%. But now, non-practicing Christians are now 43% in the U.S. The other half moved to non-Christian segments. They became Islam, or became Buddhist, or became agnostics. I have one fiery friend of mine when I was in year one at the university. We came in, then I was still seeking admission. I just went ahead to, you know, see what um, I can push to ensure that I get admitted. And this young man came from Kano, vibrant, warded. He, I could equate him with, you know, Dix, the, the person who wrote Dix Bible, because he knew the word of God from page to page. Yes, I was also by God's grace a minister of the gospel. But this young man knew the scriptures line upon line, precept upon precept. And he was a member of the church. But something happened after we left the university. He couldn't get a job. And he got frustrated. He left Nigeria, went to Europe. And when he got there, I don't know what happened to him in Europe. Now he came here for his PhD. He's in the US as, as we speak. He's graduated. He's earning good money, but he calls himself an agnostic fellow that doesn't believe in God again. My wife is a witness. I have been speaking to this young man for the past two years I came in here, and he has just decided, Victor, you are deceiving yourself. This is a man that will quote the Bible and I will be trembling. That's what is happening today. People are losing their stand for God. The weekly church attendance is also dwindling. In the year 1993, we have 45% of Americans that attend church services regularly. Today, they are 29%. Weekly church attendance by generation. The millennials have always been the lowest of the generational, you know, compar comparative analysis of, you know, they are the ones that don't go to church and they've remained that way for the past 16 years. The Gen X are the next who don't like to go to church in America. The boomers generation are the next, Why the elderly ones are the ones that you find in church. Although the elderly ones started from 51% in 2003, but today even the elderly ones are at an abysmal 37%. Something is going wrong. If you cannot be challenged by these statistics, I don't know what else will challenge you. This is real data compiled and analyzed and presented. Even those who pray in America, it used to be 3% of Americans that believe in the power of prayer as of 1996. Today, they are below 70%. That is the state of the people. In marketing, one major strategy for success is man, know thyself. Know your products. Know the people that you are trying to, that's your target audience. Now let's look at the other statistics that is happening. I showed you a first graph, the church, 
linear technology how is it rising exponentially now let's see the exponential growth of the technological space and digital space as, as it were if you look at america today before america let's talk about the global space you know there are about 7.8 billion people on earth and out of those 7.8 billion people 4.6 billion of them are online. What did I say? 4.6 billion are where? Online. That's the best <laughs> congregation you can ever have. If only you do the strategy well. The global digital growth in the last one year rose by 1%. That's about 81 million people joined the digital space just in the last one year. Thanks to COVID. If you look at the next slide, which talks about the American internet users, you see that there's almost 100% internet penetration in the US. It's about 90% now. And it therefore means the strategy you use in West Africa cannot work here. If you borrow the strike the rock, I want to uplift it into the speaking to the rock, then you'll be committing some grave fallacy of um, hasty generalization. America is about 90% internet penetration. The social media penetration of the globe, America especially is 74%. The most used platforms on planet Earth is Facebook with over 2.7 billion people as of January 2021 this year. YouTube has 2.2 billion people, 2.3 billion people. WhatsApp is about 2 billion people. Can you imagine your phone can be your digital tool for evangelism? Just that WhatsApp that you have. The statistics are there. When you get the slide, you see them. Now let's come to America. America is about 332 million people as a January 2021 count. And the internet penetration for America is about 90%, as I said. 298 million people are online in America. Are you asking where are the members in the church? They will not come to your physical space again, sorry. They've navigated, they're online. You have to go there and meet them. Paul did not bring the people from Athens and took them to Jerusalem. Say, no, Jesus died at Jerusalem. You must come to Jerusalem. No, he went there and planted churches there. May we plant churches online in Jesus' name. So, the annual digital growth for America is about 0 0.6. 1 1.9 million people joined the internet space. Sorry, 3.7 million people joined Sorry, what am I saying? 11 million people joined the internet space within, in America alone from last year to this year. 11 million people navigated online. Other statistics are there. I said all this to say that there is a digital moral decadence going on online. And you know the funny thing? They're already coming to our homes. Somebody yesterday was, you know, saying, ah, be careful what's the kind of cartoon you allow your children to watch. Many of these people are teaching them this, they are teaching them that. And I said, you know what? <laughs> Don't just be careful. Create your own content. Because until you create content, can people then consume your content? Don't always complain, hey, people are doing this. People will be bad. The Bible said the whole world lies in what? Wickedness. If you're expecting man to, an originated, regenerated man to begin to live Christ-like, is it possible? No. So God needs the Christ-like people to create our own content online. Why should, or why should we always be using the content of others? Can't we create ours? I was discussing with one of our brother who is in charge of a media here. Yeah. And I was telling him how I wish the church of God will come together on a collaborative front and create a platform 
that everybody can what, consume godly content from. But we don't have. Facebook belongs to Mark Zuckerberg. YouTube, the guy is not born again. Twitter, he's not born again. Which one? WhatsApp is not born again. Instagram is not born again. And you know the funny thing? One man owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Just one man. And me and you, we have brain. And we can't use it for God. May God not require some deep things from us in Jesus' name. If only we can come together. The problem of the church is division. This one, I, am, I belong to this. I belong to this. That was the problem in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And Paul rebuffed them, told them, <laughs> whoever you belong to, God is the one that gives what? The increase. Our arrow has been sharing some vision with us about, you know, how the GS is looking forward to coming here. But he's concerned because he doesn't want to come here and meet all these black faces. Sorry, I'm calling us black. He wants to see the people, the native of the land. We went to North Carolina, and that was my first time. And one thing I told my wife is, why is it that 99% of everybody here is just the Africans? What are we then doing? Are we gathering members of the church that flew from Africa down? Is that what we're doing? We're managing ourselves. Is that the Great Commission? May God open our eyes. I don't know how long the Washington church has been here, but we can't even find one pastor that is a Caucasian. Is it nothing to you, OE, that passed by? There's this striking internet um, web traffic. Please just show us that slide before we go to the next um, point. I just have two points. Top websites by traffic. I want to show us something, what's going on online. When I say there's a moral decadence online, if only they can zoom this, if you can see it, the num this, these are the most trafficked websites on daily basis on planet Earth. Sorry, in, in America. Sorry, this is for America. Number seven, the number one is Google. Number two is YouTube. Number three is Facebook. Number four is Amazon. Number five is Wikipedia. Number six is Yahoo. Number seven is what? On top. If you are not concerned, this should make it Pornography is the number seven most visited website in America. And guess how they look at it, the next statistics. Number 12 is also pornography. The next statistics. Look at that number seven. Let's zoom into that. Mobile, by their mobile phones, 84% of people view pornography using their mobile phones. And that's the danger is not taking our youths. Even our adults, look at it, age 65. Look at the age, the last column. Age six, that was the one that baffled me this morning when I was looking at these stats. 11% of 65 years and above are watching porn. If you think <laughs> that the church is the physical building, no, you're wrong. We need to go and plant churches online. We need to create content that people can consume. And that's why the foot of this last point is danger. Gross moral decadence. Digital missionaries wanted. May God find you faithful in Jesus' name. Point number two. Effective strategy and tools for an impactful digital ministry. God gave me a word this morning called digital. Physical plus digital. What did I say? Fee what? The future is digital. That's what we've been hearing. But no. The future is digital. And that's digital plus physical. We can't throw away the physical church. But our strategy should be digital first. What did I say? Our strategy should be digital first. And that's why I turn it, although it's called digital, but digital first, then physical. Our methods may change, but our message remains the same. What's our message? Jesus only. 
the digital ministry needs men, needs Apollos, needs Peter, needs men like you and I. I would like to take us back to an account that happened during the days of Elisha. Elisha, in 2 Kings chapter 4, a woman ran to him and told him, Oh, man of God, my, my, thou knowest that my husband. Let's read it. Let's read it. It's the Bible. 2 Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad. Of all thy neighbors, empty vessels borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and her two sons. And the story, we know the story. But about seven houses. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay thy debts, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. The problem I see here is a problem I call the problem of the prophets. Many prophets have what they need to succeed. Many pastors have what they need to succeed in ministry. But they have harmonized it. They call it just a pot of oil. And as such, they don't engage that thing. They don't try to harness the opportunities. They don't try to leverage on what they have. One striking thing about this prophet who died is that he had the solution in his house. But he died without pay. Number one is that God told Israelites, Thou shalt lend unto many, and thou shalt know what? He floated that instruction, disregarded God's word. Number two, he had a senior prophet who had divine insight, like the, the previous minister did tell us, the need for us to have spiritual gifts, word of knowledge. The senior prophet had divine insight can unravel mysteries where he did not even regard this senior prophet. He was going through a lot. He couldn't go to his senior colleague and say, Sir, I don't know how to go about this. Show me the way. So he disregarded leadership. Maybe he thought he had arrived. Number three problem of this man is I feel he wasn't a titer. He wasn't a giver. He wasn't a benevolent man because if you are the type that touches life, I don't know how the creditors will come back to want to take your two children and people will not stand for you. We heard about um, Dockers. People testified positively that she sold what? Clothes for them. I don't know if this man was a giver. There are so many things we can unravel about this man, prophet. But one thing about him is that he was blind from the solution in his house. And that's the problem with many of us. We've been given the mandate to preach the word. Instant in season. The season we are in now is a digital ecosystem. If you are instant, then you need to learn the skill. You need to learn, you know, get the tools. You need to harness the opportunities. You need to leverage on the resources around. We even have the best of phones, yet we don't preach the gospel using those phones. Do you know your WhatsApp status can be your daily devotional guide to somebody who is watching your status daily? You know somebody can go on your WhatsApp status and just see a quote about the scriptures and what he's going through. He will just call you and say, thank you for that quote. It has happened to me many times. We have the solution. 
but we are not deploring it. Look at the man of God. He told the wife, go, borrow vessels abroad. Today we have come to borrow vessels. How many of us have websites for our churches? I have a website. I'm sorry. I know you people are my fathers and mother. Can you stand up? I have a website for my church. Okay. Of all these people standing, my, please, remain standing, sir. My website is functional and is running. Keep standing. If your own is dead or you have packed it up or it went on lockdown like COVID-19, you know, you can sit down. Okay, look at this statistics. Pastor, sir, daddy, do you mind standing to look at your, your field men for the digital ecosystem? This is under 10%. Do you think we are ready for the digital missionaries' work? I like that word of faith. From today we are. And may God help us that we we'll succeed on that space in Jesus' name. Let's sit down, sirs. I have a functional Facebook page for my church. My hands up. If I were you, I would meet maybe Pastor Victor now. I don't know who can help us. If you want to buy your domain now, we can help you create your domain name and buy it now. This is a practical table talk. This is a family meeting, right? We all need these tools to succeed. I have a Facebook page for my church. Okay, there's still some good numbers. I have a YouTube account for my church. Okay. I hope other people are taking notes. You are writing the tools. <laughs> I have an Instagram account for my church. Okay, it's not just enough to have them. Do you post regularly? Or you post once in, during Easter retreat, you just post. And during December retreat, you post. May God help us to be faithful. May God help us to be available. May God help us to be teachable. We need fat pastors. F-A-T. -A -A you know, we need faithful pastors that will take these tools and do the work of an evangelist with it. We need available pastors that will try and learn. I know it's very engaging and cumbersome to learn these skills. But you'll be surprised to know that those above 65 years they started using Zoom to come to church online. So age is not a barrier. If those that are 65 years and above are beginning to learn how to use these tools, may God help us to learn how to use these tools to reach them in Jesus' name. I've just shown you the instruction from Elisha to the woman. Number one, borrow. Number two, it says shut the door. Number three, Pour the oil. And number four, sell it. Disseminate it. Engage it. When you borrow, you begin to buy all the space. You buy your domain name. If you need to buy one, please, if you, after this message, you can reach out to me. I can help all of you buy a domain name before the end of this program. We need digital presence for our churches. Our mission is to witness to the uttermost part, as I said earlier on. And then pursuing the right mission requires the discovery and the deployment of effective tools that foster ministerial impact. Pastors, this is my personal letter to pastors. If there is one lesson we need to learn from this COVID season, it is that to be effective in being the Goyi Church, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe, this is the, the, you know, this is the clarion call of our Savior to us, that this is our work, our mission. If we're going to do this, then we need to utilize the strength of both the physical and the digital church to make this work. This slide, I call it the the bespoke strategy framework for the digital and the physical church. And it's summed up in the word grace, G-R-A-C-E. The G stands for grow. We need to grow our presence there and grow our engagement. R stands for reach. We need to reach out to people, go to where they are. They're online, we go there with the gospel. 
awareness. We need to create an engaging awareness campaign. You know, for every of our events, we need to let people know about it. C stands for connect. There is no, you don't need any, you don't need to be on digital if you are not ready to connect. It's called social networking. So we need to connect with people compassionately. You know, they are in their sins. We need to reach out to them and, you know, connect with them, help them in their, be empathic. That's the whole idea of the connection. And finally, the E stands for engagement. The first G stands for what? Growth. R stands for what? Reach. A stands for what? Awareness. C stands for what? Connect. And E stands for engagement. This word, or this whole thing, I created this slide some four years ago. And um, that's been my approach to the digital space. It's all about grace. It's not your work. It's not my work. Whose work? Did he finish it? He, he, he declared what it is. So you don't go there promoting self. Jesus only. Jesus ever. Not Jesus minus, like many people are doing today. They preach Jesus, but they minus something. Not Jesus plus. What did I say? Don't preach Jesus plus. Don't lay any other burden on the people. Just preach Jesus online. I would run through this. I'll be giving you this slide. So there are two different approaches to the digital ministry, the digital nest or the digital first. Um, digital nest is either you start with the physical like we have started and we'll be looking at, you know, growing a digital presence. So you start with digital first, like the new churches, we can actually, have, you know, deploy the digital you know, church strategy, where we start with the digital first, meets the needs of people online, and they will look for us physically. Tell me to start explaining all that. Uh, I gave some big spoken things to do now. Number one, know the right digital tools to use. You need to get a website domain, you need to build it, make it engaging and interactive. You need a strong social media presence. Get Facebook, get Instagram, get your live tweets. You need a virtual service to run concurrently with your physical church. Either you learn how to use the Facebook and YouTube Live, which is free, or you pay using the paid streaming. Um, I gave the examples of some of the paid streaming apps that can be used. You need to run, you know, part of our digital tools is to learn how to partner using the right softwares like Adobe Suite, editing software, email marketing software to reach out and follow up people, prioritize media, can create excerpts of your messages, break them. I was talking to one of our pastors, and I was telling him, all your messages, do you record them? Can we at least even create audio version of those messages? All your messages, do you, if you don't have a recording device, please order one on Amazon now for your church. We record our messages. We are just barely five people. Praise the Lord. <laughs> We're a new church. We started last year during covid and the Lord will help. We've had about 28 members at some point. Uh -huh. So, the Lord will help us and will grow in Jesus' name. Community engagement in your community. What are they doing? Learn to join a good cause. Learn to even give up your space. Give it up for people to run community outreaches as far as it's promoting Christ's cause. The next thing to do is content, content, content. And for me, content starts with creating the right content calendar. And you know the right, these words that says content is king. You need to be, to, you know, plan your contents. These things are skill sets that we have to learn. I don't know if the leadership of the church at the headquarters can create a digital media agency, you know, plat, you know, membership or committee that people can be, you know, asking questions when they don't have the right um, answers pertaining the matter. I'm running late already, and um, we need to pray now. Enough of, has been said. Enough has been what? Jesus only. Jesus ever. Jesus all in all. He's our savior. He's our sanctifier. He's our healer. He's our baptizer. He's our soon coming king. And when he comes, he will find us faithful, reaching out to the uttermost parts the earth in Jesus name we'll rise up to pray
the uttermost parts. The uttermost parts. The uttermost parts. What are you doing to reach the people of the uttermost parts? May the Lord depend on us. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Shall we sit the place? We are humbling the retreat this time a little different from the way we normally do. Instead of just rushing through without revealing what we have gained. I want to remind ourselves, just like they do in the school settings, what have we benefited? I think, Bro Victor, uh, when you talk about digital ecosystem, you didn't quite define what it is. And not all of us as young as you are. Many of us are getting close to retirement. And some of us are doing over time. Praise God. Uh, breaking it down would have helped us a little bit more uh, because that is a new age language for new age people. Praise God. But basically, when we talk about digital ecosystem, we're talking about even the definition says it's a complex network. Amen. Of stakeholders. Oh, okay. Uh, that connects online and interact digitally. So, if you are not a computer based person, it's like we have just spoken over your head. Do we understand? And that's why we would have loved it to be broken down more and simplified in such a way that common people can really understand. So what are we talking about this system? It's actually talking about collaboration. It's about networking. But it's something you do online. And when we talk about stakeholders, it means it's something you're interested in, I'm interested in different people, and then we are connecting together to work together uh, just like he was talking about, I think there is a point he talked about having a, a database whereby anybody, everybody, everywhere can get into it. Amen? And benefit from it. It's for mass benefit of everybody. Now, I want to sound a warning. Of course, when it comes to having your website, it's something we have said again and again. There was even a time I brought somebody here, invited pastors and members to come here, and we were trained how to build our own website. How many of you remember? Okay, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I think out of all those that were trained that time, maybe it's only Pastor Joey that is having his website running. Do you see how it's running? Praise God. Now, this is where I'm going. Please, for goodness sake, before you build any website, be very careful. Because once you put it out there, if you are not 
um, if you are not computer knowledgeable, don't even go near. Many of